Welcome back to Apple Arts Home Lab, AKA The Basement, AKA Networking Disaster. So today I am here to fix up the networking in my home lab. Not like the topology, what connects to what, etc., but like the actual wires themselves. They're kind of a mess. It's my box PC that you know and love. I got some fiber just running across the floor. This sandy connection that I use for testing, also running across the floor. Not ideal. Gotta watch where I step. I got boxes on the floor here. But anyway, this is my networking closet. It's literally a closet. It's not even painted because it's in my basement. It has my network in it. This guy is the NAS that runs my house. Over there is the backup server. Over there is the box PC for some frame of reference. So over here, I've put a lot of effort into neatening up the wires that go into the patch panel as they come in from the house and that kind of thing. I took a lot of time and care to make it look good. But then, well then this happened here. All of these cables here, these are all running to the shelf here. Some of these go off to my workbench. I got my fiber, I got HDMI. And uh, yeah, so today we're gonna fix that. So today I'm gonna run some new wires to my bench so that it's all neat and tidy. I'm neaten up my patch panel, neaten up my rack. That's what we're doing today. Now this video is sponsored by Patchbox, so come along on this adventure. So here I got the stuff from Patchbox. Take a look at what's inside. They also sent me a dev mount developed with love in Austria. So these guys are studs that clip on to the rack rail and you can use them to mount equipment. And they come with these, oh, these are hefty guys. Beautiful caps, very nice looking. So these work similar to traditional cage nuts, but better. So you can snap these guys in they can hold your equipment while you're working on installing it, and you thread the nut in by hand. Also sent me a setup.exe, which helps you hold stuff while you're installing it. Also developed with love in Austria. So it's kind of too big for the close-up camera, so you uh, might get a different view than usual. This thing is massive. And this one is made in Hungary. It's like the world's biggest pizza box. So they have a couple different sizes of this, and I had to get the smallest size for my rack because I have a two post telecom rack and not a four post server rack. So the 365 is what I got. It's a bit of an up close view here. See all the nice cables hanging out. So I'm gonna unbox the second one. Then I'll have room on my bench to take a look at it. So here we go, my two patch boxes. So I have one that's all black. I have one that's half blue and has two fibers. So I have a couple fibers in my house. I have fiber to this guy here. It probably goes upstairs. And so I got two fibers. The rest are empty. So I get more cartridges later. They come in different colors. They come in fiber types. So yeah. So basically a patch box is made up of these modules that have a single patch cable inside. And when I pull on the latch to unlock it, I can pull out of the cable and it'll spring back. So I can take out exactly as much as I need and then latch it. And now I've got a patch cable that's the perfect length. It's a really tight space here, but up here on top, I've got a 48 port patch panel. That's everything inside the house. Below that, I've got a 24 port. That's everything outside the house. I'm going to add a keystone panel. That's gonna be everything that's not cap five. So fiber, stuff like that. So I've got my 28 port micro tick that I love very much. My 16 port D-Link that I tolerate. Uh, I also have a five port two and a half gig switch that's out of view that's gonna move over to the shelf here. So yeah, the uh, UPS is going away because the batteries are dead, it's lead acid, they're awful. So I have a lithium one to replace it that I have in a past video. So Patchbox has a tool we can use to help design the rack. Defaults to 42 U's and uh, unfortunately I don't have 42, I actually only have 12. Let's see, so I actually have a two U 48 port. So I'm gonna put it in as two 24 ports switch and another switch. This is what I got now. So I got the 48 port, 2U, I got the 24 port, 1U, the two switches, the KVM, the shelf, and the UPS. So KVM is going to come out. This is going to be another patch panel. Then this is gonna be my patch box. So this will be a configure my own. This will be a CAT 6A. So I'm gonna use blue for my IoT network. Okay, so I think that's about how many blues I have. And then over this side, I'm gonna put some fiber 
Okay, so I've got the custom patch box, the all black patch box, and also the UPS is going to come out. Okay, so this is what it should look like when I'm all done. Except like in real life. So at this point I started with disconnecting all the HDMI cables to the KVM switch, so I pulled that out first. Next I tried to find cables that weren't um, critical, so I could keep the internet on as long as possible. So I'm taking out some of those patch cables, some of the cables to the storage server, because the backup server doesn't run during the day. So now I'm putting in those dev mounts for where the switches are going to go, moving the switches down. I pretty much just use the D-Link switch for stuff that both doesn't need PoE and also isn't super fast. So this is a lot of like 100 meg stuff like the Apple TVs. So now I've got space to add stuff, but my existing patch cables aren't quite long enough, so a lot of them had to be unplugged. So I'm trying to keep track of where everything's going. So I left the cables plugged in up top so that I know which drops need to get patched when I put the patch box in. So here goes the patch box itself. It slid in pretty easily, although a lot of the wires tried to snag on it. Not a huge deal. And there I go, I'm off to patching. So one at a time, I'm removing the old patch cable and running a new one. So I'm again, I'm using blue for my IoT stuff, and I'm running it to the first half of the ports on the PoE switch. And then I'm using black for the non-IoT stuff, which is the rest of the network. Now really I wish I could use my IoT stuff on the lower cost D-Link switch because there's no VLANs really, it's just the one IoT network. But um, unfortunately I need PoE for basically all of the IoT stuff. So it has to go to the more nicer MicroTik switch. But it is what it is. So this is a view you guys probably don't see a lot. So here's the box PC. And I got this guy over here on the wall, it's a Cat5. And usually I use it to plug in my camera, but I'm going to instead use this for networking on the bench. That way I don't have a cable dangling out and running out of the door. However, I probably need more than one. So I'm gonna run a second cable here and an extra one for my camera over there and two fibers. So I can have fiber for this, two ethernet for the bench and one extra fiber for the bench. So I got a bonus coax too, not that I need coax. Right about here where the ladder is, is where the camera usually sits. And I've just been running an ethernet cable across the floor for the camera. So the camera needs power over ethernet, it's PoE powered. So I'm running another cable up to the ceiling, down the wall over there for the camera. I accidentally cut the cable that was already there. So I'm running two cables now, just have two new ones, not a big deal. And I also get some fiber to run through the ceiling. So these are five meter OM4. So I just kind of tied them onto something heavy to drop them down the wall. There's nothing in the wall, they just didn't want to go straight. So there we go, I fished them back out, got them all taped together with blue tape. Two fibers to Cat5. So then after this, I got a bunch of Velcro straps to add the wires to the bundle that's already up there. So that's basically all of the ethernet and, co and coax in the house. They run either through there or they run um, through the closet. So adding into that bundle, there's already a lot of um, so someone made the mistake of buying fibers that were slightly too short. These guys here. It's not a huge problem because they're really cheap. It's just more work because I have to replace them. So now I'm neatly adding my new wires to my bundles they already have. I've been bringing a lot of new cables around on the left, so I decided to start these guys on the right, just to kind of balance out the patch panel a bit. So then I do the usual TIA 568B dance with the punch down tool. I really don't mind uh, 110 style patch panels. I rather like them, but um, in this case, since I had fiber, I did Keystone instead. Next up, I gotta take care of these wires here that run over to these computers. So to do that, I bought some pre-made patch cables and some female to female Keystone RJ45s. So these Keystones are gonna go on the Keystone patch panel. I'm gonna run the patch cords around in a nice bundle. I'm gonna wrap it together with my Velcro straps and it'll look nice. So I popped in all those Keystone RJ45 couplers. And then one at a time, I'm running these patch cables over. 
I started with the backup server, which is a bit out of view. It needs two of them, one for data and one for IPMI. And I also need one for the main NAS. Those are the only three I ran so far, because those are the only things I have hooked up right now. I also have little three node cluster, and sometimes I have other NASs I'm testing in here. So I put in six of those RJ45s. Okay, so I'm down to just two wires left. This wire is running the camera you're watching on, so it'll stay for a little bit. This wire is power to the NAS. So now it's time to do with power. So I finished all the power wiring off camera. It was kind of an urgent time to get the internet back up and running. and I couldn't power the camera itself. But now it's time to take the old UPS out of the rack. And this thing is really heavy. So that's why I've got setup.exe, a tool to help me hold it. So this thing is designed to grab onto the rack rails and either stick out in front or inside the rack and support something while you're getting in and out. So it's very easy just to snap it onto the rack rail. Now that it's in, I can take the screws out. It'll hold the weight, and I can pull the UPS out of there. So it's holding it now. I can fish the wires out. And I'm out. And I'm out. This thing can get recycled. So I'm done. I can pop the setup.exe out. See, we got some magnets to keep it folded up. So that's all the networking work I've got for today. You can see the uh, beautiful wiring job I did on the patch panel now. Very happy with it. My workbench is now a lot cleaner too, especially the floor. I don't have cables running all over for testing stuff. The NAS is back up and running. The internet's back up and running, of course. That's good. So thanks for coming along. Thanks to Patchbox for sponsoring this video. I've got a uh, Kofi down below if you want to give me a tip. I always appreciate it. I've got a Discord server as well if you want to chat with me about any of this stuff. And I'll see you guys on the next adventure.